I'm Dr. Heather Igliliukti. I'm the director of the uh, Inuit Futures Project, and I am based in Jojage, Muniang, uh, Montreal, Quebec, in Canada, uh, traditional territory of the Kayankahaga Nation and home today to many Indigenous peoples. And this is the Ili Sarnik series, which is presented in partnership with the Inuit Art Foundation. And today with the Indigenous Screen Office, and both of those organizations are based in Takaranto or Toronto, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabeg, uh, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples. And of course, is also now home to many Indigenous peoples, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. Uh, we have joining us on the call today a very exciting group, the cast and their mothers, their Ananas and Paniks are joining together um, from Denmark and Greenland today. And we have a moderator with us as well as Daniel Duas, who's doing the behind the scenes for the Inuit Art Foundation. That's the, the purple eye on the screen. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you Lakalu Williamson Bathory. Uh, she is a Kalalik performing and visual artist, spoken word poet, actor, storyteller, and writer based in Iqaluit Nunavut. She's actually just returned from the Berlinale, where she presented the exhibition Tartu Paluk Prototype, supported by the Indigenous Screen Office, also one of our partners on this event. Tartu Paluk is a live action animation and VFX prototype for a larger immersive project in development. The prototype was also part of Arctic XR, which premiered in association with the Sami Pavilion at the Venice Biennale this past summer in 2022. In 2021, Lakalu won one of Canada's most prestigious art prizes, the Sobi Art Award. This followed her momentous win of the first ever Kanoyuak Ashabak Award by the Inuit Art Foundation, which is now going into its third year. And just on Friday, the Inuit Art Foundation, through the department that Danielle is in, Artist Services, directed by Inuk Heather Campbell, uh, announced the long list of the new Kanoyuak Ashabak Prize. It's expanded this year. There are now 10 artists on the long list, and it was just announced on Friday. Super exciting how everything is connected. <laughs> Um, as co-founder of Kegivut, the Arctic Inspiration Prize winning performing arts organization which trains aspiring performance, performing artists, Lakalu has actually been a longtime supporter of emerging artists and young performers everywhere, which makes her, I think, the ideal moderator for this wonderful conversation that we're about to have on the Oscar-nominated short film, Ivalu. It is a, I haven't seen the film myself yet. Lakalu actually just saw it at the film festival last week, which is amazing timing. And uh, what, from what I understand, it is a very challenging and emotional film starring uh, two emerging actors who we just thrilled to have with us today to talk about uh, this incredibly powerful work that they've done together and their exciting journey to the Oscars coming up in Oh my goodness, just a couple of weeks. So I'm very, very excited to have you here. Thanks to everyone who's joining us and everyone who watches this later. Uh, we are so excited and thrilled to be able to support you on your Oscar journey. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our fantastic moderator, Lakalu. Nakumi, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to disappear. <laughs> Disappeared like a Cheshire cat with a big smile. <laughs> it's <was> very lovely. Anu anna ka ima do kado kachi sinna sa un inu itamani Canada mi amma sauce do tulun na ninga no to kato un ilikato ay kato nukua suliyato si suliri sa kusi suliyak kusi isang anna I'm so happy to be with uh, these young people and their mothers to be learning about uh, what they have been doing, what the process has been, and where they're going. And it's a very momentous occasion because uh, this is a short film that has been made entirely in Greenland with two really incredible emerging actors that has gone straight to being nominated for an Oscar. So in the coming weeks, these two, Mila and Nivi and their families are all going to be heading to Los Angeles and walking down the red carpet and, and showing their incredible film, Ivalu. 
So I thought probably it's probably best if we start with uh, introductions uh, and maybe Nivi and Ayengwa, the two of you could introduce each other. My name is Nivi Larsen. I am 16 years old and I love... No, you play. Um, I played Ivalu. Um, yes. Well, me, I'm the mother of Nivi, uh, and, ha and I, ha I have supported her uh, from the beginning. Mm. No one. <laughs> no one. Mm. How about you, Mila? My name is Mila. I'm 11 years old, and I played Bibelu in the movie, and... My mom is currently putting my little brother to sleep right now, but she's coming very soon. But yeah. Mm. And so you live in Denmark, but you are from Greenland. Yeah. Which is why it's your brother's bedtime. It's late there. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> late right now, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So maybe we should hear a little bit about the film. Um, I was very blessed to be able to watch it last week in Berlin and not just able to, to watch it, but actually to sit with Mila and Baningwa as they watched it for the first time in full. It was extremely moving, uh, very beautiful and actually very difficult. Uh, and I was just amazed by how you as young people are able to hold all of those truths. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the film, Mila, what, what the film is about? Um, the movie is about two sisters who have a father that is not such a good father. And, you know, the sister couldn't take what she's going through anymore. And, you know, the little sister is looking for her and just slowly starting to find out what is happening. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very good summary. Um, Nivi, would you like to talk about how the film incorporates the story of the family and your character along with uh, mythology, Greenlandic stories. Um, I think it's a very powerful thing that happened in the film and really important to understand. Um, in Greenland, there's a lot of um, abuse, abusement, um, and the film is about to, like, about um, to stop the abusement and it's going to help um, the children because they are struggling. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I should probably mention to people that are, that are attending this afternoon that the film is actually extremely difficult um, and uh, you should know um, as you go in to watch it, it has to do with themes of uh, extreme abuse within a family uh, and how these two sisters cope with it. Um, and, and as Nivi said, it's a film that's to help um, move people through the experience and to, to, uh, to find solutions, to find, you know, uh, um, I wouldn't say inner peace, but to find understanding of, of the situation of uh, abuse within families. Is that right, you think, Nila? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, can you both tell me about what it is like to be uh, making a film as a young person for the very first time? Really? Would you like to start? Okay. Me. Um, well, um, at the beginning, it was hard because um, it was my first um, film and 
this film um uh it's hard to film because emotions to show emotions and uh um okay. um trying to to trying to show sad emotions and it's hard to me mm -hmm. yeah i can imagine how hard it was did you ever do any type of acting before this movie no it it was her fi first film at a yeah. dif difficult uh, subject incredibly In difficult uh -huh. i i think that's uh one of the things that uh Inuit often experience in the art world as well as in you know um, life experiences that you start off with something extremely difficult and then oh my gosh you're walking down the red carpet in Los Angeles it's uh, uh, one of those like we have to do things so we just do it and and uh, we all look up to both of you and everybody for for accomplishing this uh, incredible feat um, Nivi, did you get uh, some training on the set? Like what kind of support did you get to learn how to act, learn how to have these big emotions and um, how to get through the day? Um, my mom is the one that has support that um, because uh, that text, um, I have to read it and my mom, uh act people look so i'm so she could be even though so i read it and my mom um answer it uh, that's how we learned that casting text <laughs> we practiced <laughs> Um, on the other screen, you can see that Paningwak has, has joined us. She is the mother of Mila. So Mila, do you want to tell us about what it was like for you to begin acting in such a, start your acting career in such a powerful, uh, difficult piece? Um, it was definitely hard. Um, but like the hard scenes were very tough and but like some scenes it was not so hard but me and my mom would like be practicing like to play Eva Lu and I would play Biba Lu like you know and um I acted in a music video yeah she started we kind of she was eight when me and my ex-husband made her play a character in one of his music videos that was always also like a tough scene you see a father drinking beer and there's a child like trying to take the dad away like and that was her <laughs> and i filmed like it was something we just made but we explained to her what acting was when she was eight. And then, yeah, this opportunity came. And when we first, um, when she first got to audition and then she got the part and then we got the script, we didn't know who those guys were until the day before we were gonna meet the director. I Googled the names on the script and the first pictures, all of the pictures that I saw on Google were like two guys holding Oscars. <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh my God. Because I thought it was just a regular like short film, but it turned out to be much more than that. So yeah, it's been wild. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about the background of the production? There's, uh, it's co-produced between uh, Greenlandic producers and Danish producers, I believe, as well as co-directed between a Greenlandic director and a Green, uh, Danish director. 
Can you tell us about that relationship a little bit? Paningwa? Yeah. Um, the Danish people came and hired an entire Greenlandic production team. So the only Danish people who were there were the director, the producer, the cameraman, and the cameraman's assistant. So mm -hmm. that was the only, and the rest of the crew that was on set were local people that was hired by Pulaama Greenland, who did a fantastic job. And I was there every day, like when she was acting, just observing and making sure everything was okay. And yeah, they, it, they were so professional. It was so much fun. And I could tell that she was very comfortable. So, and the way the Danish people approached this was with huge respect. They did some research mm -hmm. first. I know they talked to um, psychologists in Greenland and some people who were experts in this difficult subject matter. So it, f it felt very reassuring, like this is made with respect. And that meant so much mm. for me as a mom, because I wouldn't have said yes if I felt like it was like foreigners coming to tell a sad story, that kind of narrative. So I really mm. liked how mm. they approached making it and also co-produced, because most of the crew was Greenlandic. So that made me mm. very proud to see that she was a part of as a mom mm -hmm. also because I'm, I'm in movie yeah. business myself and I know how it is so it made me so proud to see all those work, hard working Greenlandic crew do you want to talk a little bit about where the film was made uh, what parts of Greenland and how how um, the beautiful scenes were accomplished. Uh, I know it's very, very difficult, very expensive to, to film in Greenland. And it was, of course, important for it to be in Greenland. So okay. can you tell us where it was filmed and how? Yes, uh, uh, I was lucky, lucky to follow the two girls I made, when they made the film because uh, they filmed it uh, uh, in uh, where the children have an uh, autumn holiday. I'm myself and a teacher. So I have been lo uh, lucky to follow the two girls and uh, it begins uh, a little bit out, uh, outside of the nook, uh, not far from the city. Um, uh, it happened uh, well, uh, in the afternoon, I can remember. Uh, it was in autumn. Uh, while uh, filming the film, I could see they, they were freezing. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> but I could see that they had uh, fun. Yes, I could fun. see. Yes. Uh, he missed the achilles most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. And one day we went mm. to a, a settlement hangar, which was uh, closed in uh, during the uh, 60s. We were there for a day. Um, and I, I could see that the um the girls have fun also over there. Um, the settlement, which was closed in 16, was a beautiful um, place, I think. Yeah, it is just incredible. And there's all sorts of scenes where um, you're flying over top of the land, um, like a like a like a raven. Yeah. Because of the character of the raven pulling Bibaluk towards Ivalu, um, as she's trying to look for her sister, there's a raven that's helping her, and it, I find that the raven really helps you uh, 
look at the land and appreciate it in uh, a spiritual way in the film. Um, can any of you talk about how that, that spiritual aspect is played out in the film? Because I think this is one of the things that helps people pull through such a difficult story is talking about connection to Sesuma Angna, to, to the yeah. goddess at the bottom of the sea, oh, yeah. to have the Sudugak being, uh, you know, a total magical character that's, you know, looking into our world as human beings. What part of our culture as Galajid um, helps us, you know, what what does the what is the meaning of story, of of myth of spirit that helps the film Ivalu get to where it needs to go? I think using uh, Mother of the Sea and the Raven for me personally gave some comfort, like because this is part of our history mm -hmm. and. They just made it so good, like they made everything fit together so good that it made sense. Not a single time did it felt wrong when they talked, because you know, this is based on a graphic novel and there is no mother of the sea in the graphic novel. So when they added that, it's like, it made sense. Mm -hmm. and yeah, even though some of the scenes felt very alone and isolating, at the same time, it to see to have the raven and the story of the mother of the sea gave some sense of hope in a way. Like, yeah, everything's gonna be okay in the end for Bibalu's character. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one thing that struck me most was. The sacrifice of the sacrifice Ivalu did, the love for her sister, like mm -hmm. she sacrificed herself to the mother of the seed so she could have a good life, the character of Bibalu. So yeah. I think that speaks huge volume of who we are as people. Like mm -hmm. we are very connected to our families, like more than I think Western people. So yeah, I would say comfort. That's what it gave me. Comfort and hope. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um Nidhi, as a character that uh becomes that disappears within the story of the film, um how did you connect to her character? How did what did what life did you give Ivalu? Mm. So, uh, yeah. um, so um, it was hard because uh, it was my first movie, and I have to scream and in the film. Um, it was hard to me and to show emotional face and uh, it was hard to put it uh, emotional uh, mind that's okay mind. I, maybe facial expressions mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, no, not box off. It was fun to be in nature because I love mm. being in nature, but it was hard to um film we was um um kanana akpataka ya kasuda kumut we am utak akpataka ya kasuda kanok 
So it was very uh, physically taxing as well to have to like climb up and climb down and be in the cold as well, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's so great. Um, I think Nibi, one of the most incredible gifts that uh, you gave within the film um, that was very um, subtle, like it wasn't uh, a very obvious gift, but was when uh, when you were getting confirmed and the look that you gave everybody in the whole uh, in the whole event. I think that was such a beautiful moment just before we all got destroyed by the heavy uh, abusive situation that we realized that you were in. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what confirmation means in Galatic culture and why it's a, a, a pivotal point, why it's a big point in the film? Um, so um, in Greenlandic culture, uh, and this exists in both pre-Christian pre and in Christian times, young people get celebrated for who they are. Uh, and so Greenland has a very long Lutheran Christian tradition now. So they get asked in the, the church a bunch of questions about who they're going to become basically. Uh, and it's a huge occasion in Greenland. So Nibi was saying that, you know, it's a really wonderful opportunity to celebrate young people and also to dress them in the most beautiful clothes that, that we have, beadwork and seal skin and bright colors and beautiful sort of um, uh, men's outfits as well. Um, and it's like this moment of like, massive celebration of, of puberty, of being a young person. Uh, and so there is a scene that's uh, in the film that, that has this beautiful celebration moment. And I just want to comment on how, how Nivi gives us this incredible gift of being so proud of herself. I mean, as the, as the character Ivalu, so proud of herself for getting to that place uh, as a young person and feeling beautiful just before we get destroyed by the most difficult part of the film. Um, I found that very powerful. Um, are there any questions or anything that you, that Mila and Paningwak and Nivi and Nayangwak want to, to tell the people here about, about other aspects of making the film? At the end, you could see the mother of Sinamanna. Uh, the mother of uh, of the tea. Um, as, as I can remember, it's about a, a story for many years ago, uh, before we was born. born um, we had heard uh, a stories uh, that at Angako, when people starves and uh, starves and have not food. Angakok helps them. Then Angakusatuni try to help them people by uh, go to the sea of Panamana. Uh, Mother of the sea. Mm -hmm. After he has done his job, then the animals will come through. Then People can uh, eat again and they survive like that. Mm -hmm. So this film, it tries to show that uh, 
these uh, ab abusements of children uh, that um, is sometimes uh, I can uh, I think it's uh, a way to show that uh, the problems of abusements can be solved solved if uh, the adults can could help the children. Yeah, yeah, it's such a strong message. Yeah. <laughs> I think that both the film as well as the making of the film, for example, here we are sitting with two young women with their mothers talking about how to move through the issues of abuse and how to find hope and comfort and using uh, um, our Inuit spirituality and customs to be able to move through difficult situations. It's a very powerful message all in all. Um, we do have a question from uh, one of the attendees. They're asking, do either of you young people uh, plan to act in future films? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Nina, Friday, this Friday, a few days ago, because Mila has been approached by international film people. Uh, and this time it's American French, French production. Um, and we've been having some meetings with them here in Denmark. Uh, they come, they fly over from both uh, Switzerland and France. And they had some meetings over the fall and winter. So Friday, they officially offered her the role, a leading role in another production that's gonna be filmed in Greenland. Um, so that's, and it's a future film. So it's a long film. Um, so we did nothing but Hopping and dancing and screaming <laughs> Friday for that, because that's what she wants to do. So, yeah, how do you feel about that? I feel very proud and happy and excited about it. That's incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Nivimi, what are um, your future plans with? I dream um, become an actress because it's fun and I can travel. Like I went to Gangel um, and I'm going to uh, my dream place to go, Los Angeles, California. and. It's fun to be an actress, to experience. Um, Many different things. Yes. Wow. I, can wow. you, I can also tell you that uh, her cousin, Angumwa, is uh, an actor. With, uh, he has been an actor in diff different films. And uh, she looked up to him and still do. Uh, she wanted to be an, an actress like him. So now um, the oh. film succeeds, the first some film succeed and the first way to act uh, Oscar. <laughs> <That's Yee. amazing. laughs> It is incredible, yeah. Angungwak Larsen is uh, the actor that plays the father in the film Ivaluk and in real life is Nivi's cousin. Yes. And you'll see him in almost any mention of Greenland in any film all around the world right now. He's a very uh, prolific actor. Uh, yes. And I think... Uh, you can see him most easily right now on Netflix if you watch uh, Porn, the, um, the political science, um, the political science, the political show, political drama show. 
uh, mm. about uh, Danish politics. And I got to say, in that show, of course, the Greenlandic parts are the best parts of that show, uh, mostly because of, of Anun Luak and, and the other Greenlandic actors that make it come to life. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, can you all tell us about what your journey to the Oscars is going to be like? What are you looking forward to? What are you going to wear? What do you want to see? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we are, I'm, right now we're getting like gala dresses made from a Greenlandic designer and we're gonna match in the fabric but in different designs that matches our age and body type um so they're being made in Greenland so we can't really get to see them up close and like measurements we have to do it ourselves I'm that's something we discuss a lot like when we first found out, okay, what are we gonna wear? <laughs> and now that we have confirmed that we're going into Dolby Theater, um, I just really wanna represent Greenland and I'm hoping to find a Greenlandic flag that I can drag with <laughs> like showing. Um, yeah, that's, something we've discussed a lot and also of course who are we gonna see like oh my god (laughs) but yeah we're mostly like anticipating and excited to see the dresses that this amazing Greenlandic designer is making how they're gonna are they gonna fit we won't know until the day before we fly to LA so can you drop Hoping. the name? No couture. Okay. Yes. Very, very cool. Amazing. So hoping that they will fit. Because if not, they <laughs> will. <laughs> I know yeah. it. They'll fit. Yeah. I'm gonna wear um all black um loose blazer um and white shoes the earrings will be ulu fantastic oh. and then uh, mother trying to uh, uh, contact an uh, uh, Greenlandic designer and uh, I asked mm-hmm. if she could uh, be a sponsor to a dress which looks like our traditional uh, clothes, I like this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, she asked me, but I, I haven't asked her no, I asked her no. I will do that soon. So That's I want so to fun. put that the uh, Greenlandic uh, designers made a uh, beautiful um, dresses also. <laughs> mm, yeah, Greenlandic uh, fashion. Is so yes, Greenlandic fashion. If it, it could be possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, look, we're not allowed to bring seal skin into U.S. That's what I've heard. Because we've been wanting to oh bring God. national costumes. Because that's something we talked about. It could be so badass, awesome to have our national costumes. But we talked with people we know and my parents. Like, you cannot bring seal skin into U.S. Oh. So no, it needs to be, like, prints not the real Mm -hmm. ones. If we wanna bring something in national costume inspired, which I think is very unfortunate, but- It is, it's just a terrible racist situation. That's what it is. Yeah. (laughs) 
So that's why we cannot bring our national costumes if we like, because we can, we don't have our own, but we can borrow, a lot of Greenlandic people have them here in Denmark, but we just cannot bring it to US. Luckily, Maybe. it's a it's a part of the visual part of the film, so people will be seeing our Galatli suit in the film itself, even yeah. though the United States could be a little bit less racist. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. So um, there's people that are wondering how uh, people here in Canada are going to be able to watch the film. Um. <laughs> I think it's up to I think it's up to uh, the producers. We can't say when. We can't tell you when. <laughs> it's up to the mm. to let you yeah. see the film. So it's yeah, yeah. So it's been circulating in international film festivals for a while now, hasn't it? Yes, it's premiered in Australia, from I know, from what I know of, and then the producer and the director Rebecca and Anas they have shown it in U.S. And I actually, because I Google and YouTube, even do Oscar like almost every day for update. <laughs> <laughs> I know that An Anas was talking with the Canadian news. I cannot remember which one that, but I saw last Sunday while we were in Berlin, they were showing it somewhere in Canada, but that wasn't in uh, Nunavut uh, area. Mm. But I know mm -hmm. that they showed it in Canada somewhere. Mm, I I really hope that um, they'll be able to get it into, for example, the Imaginative Film Festival, which is based in Toronto. And that's where a lot of Indigenous people from all over uh, come to, to watch Indigenous content. I also hope that it gets into all the major uh, festivals. I mean, it will. It's, it's already nominated for an Oscar, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. While we're waiting for other questions, I have one about how you feel the acting world in Greenland is doing in terms of supporting young people. Uh, how, how do young Inuit in Greenland become actors? Where can they go to get opportunities and training? How easy is it for a child, a young person uh, in Greenland to, to get into acting? I think it's it's not it's not easy. It's it's not so easy. Um, it was by an an coincidence that we found out that uh, people look seek after uh, actors actresses. That's why we uh, we Divi told me that uh, um, that people look uh, was seeking young people in casting, for casting. Mm -hmm. It's not, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, difficult in uh, Korea to let know that uh, uh, filmmakers can be, it's okay, filmmakers, what uh, filmmakers can do or what they can do Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what kind of support do Galatli need in order to have uh, better access for young people to acting, do you think? More information, more inform information. So more yes. uh, information to where to sign. I didn't know where to sign uh, castings. Uh, so I saw it on Facebook, people look um, searching for a character for Ivalu. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then I signed it, so. So it's not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Sesame. Some information is uh, Mangla, Kanu Dasok. They need, uh, it seems that the uh, information is missing. Sesame. The ends most information must be, must be better. Yeah. What I know as a filmmaker myself is that it's all it all comes down to the lack of financial support for Greenlandic filmmakers. We are so many filmmakers in Greenland right now, and we are bubbling to want to create and do something. But the funding can be very uh, the funding is very difficult because there are all these rules. We are under Denmark, but we cannot, um, how do you say it? Ask for funding in the Danish uh, film funds, I think. It's something like that. And also it's very political. Like, yeah. I think our politicians need to support artists, not only filmmakers, but in general artists much more because Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know any, everyone I know has so many talents. They are in filmmaking, they sing, they act, they edit, they direct, they produce. Like, like me, I produce, but I also act, I also do speaking, like so many different things. And I also edit when I have to, and then I do some casting sometimes. You know, we are yeah. not many so we need to do much more but we don't get paid that much for what we do so mm -hmm. also like so if we want to expand more of for example kids acting we need more funding for that yeah specifically yeah yeah and that's the case right across Inuit Nunad is that uh because we're not that many in the communities uh, or anywhere in general, we're not that many in the cities either. We have to be good at everything. We can't be specifically good at certain things. We have to be good at everything. Uh, and I think that for Galatid, it's especially hard because the Danish government or the Danish funding agencies don't recognize Galatid as indigenous people. They just recognize Gadaisid as Danish citizens. So there's as much competition for Gadaisid projects as there is for any other Danish project. Do I have that correct? Yeah, I think so. I think it's like that. Uh, and I've seen it's been a huge debate uh, recently and last year of our, because we're not recognized as indigenous people. As mm -hmm. I know some students who are studying abroad cannot get funded because they're not indigenous on paper or something like that. So it really comes down to like, we need to make changes in those areas because we, we adapt so easily to so many different stuff in filmmaking area and mm -hmm so many amazing artists are so many things like i don't like to label myself as one thing like a producer like because mm -hmm. i can do much more than that um and i just really hope that we can change that because we have so many uh, kids who want to act from what i've heard mm -hmm. and also from her friends like who know that she was filmed and she gets asked a lot of questions of how they can do it and how it was. You know, a lot of young kids are curious because of Eva Du production. Mm -hmm, no kidding. So we have a, a question from an Inuk from Nunatiavut here, Alison Hardwick. Hi, Alison. Uh, she wants to know uh, from Nivi and from Mila, what your dream film project will be to work on? What do you dream of making? Making? <laughs> Um, it would be 
action action films because movies it was very like hard but like so um, you want more action yeah I, I want more action <laughs> like cars blowing up and like chasing yeah. and spies Ooh. Like, fan of Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Marvel. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's so cool. I think we lost Nivia and Nayangua. Hopefully, they'll pop back up in a, in a minute. Oh, they're oh, back. They are. They're back. <laughs> 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 Thank you. We definitely need an Yes. Um, um, maybe horror movies because ah. I, <laughs> I like to see horror movies and her cousin is in uh, some horror movies in Sunamana. There's some terrifying Greenlandic movies out already. <laughs> yes. So maybe wants to make more. She wants Laku Luke to have bad dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it could be a private talks too about private talk. <laughs> yeah, private talk. You want to say tell tell people what private dude are? Um, private talk means uh, as I uh, can remember, it, it's some people who who left the city or the settlements to live uh, in the nature. They didn't mm -hmm. want to live uh, with people anymore. Because- Yeah, and then because they've, for whatever reason they need to leave and sometimes they develop like supernatural abilities. Yes, like, some do, yes, that was, yes. Yeah. Sometimes we <laughs> heard about COVID talks in uh, nowadays. <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely yes. so that's really been a, a big a big topic in the in the horror movies that have been coming out of greenland for the past few years that's for sure Absolutely. Yeah. yes so maybe we should end up with uh, a couple more questions about our our stars so we can get to know them a little bit better can you tell us what your favorite foods are can you tell us what your favorite music is? And for example, what are you gonna be listening to while you get so dolled up to go down the red carpet? What music, what, what is your soundtrack while you're putting your mascara on? Um, my favorite food is spaghetti. <laughs> and we just had it yeah we just had it <laughs> we have it like almost all the time but what i would be listening to when i'm getting ready hmm. i think it has to be like something that makes you feel confident Ooh. like <laughs> like That's my girl yeah something like Rihanna or something? Because you know, <laughs> Rihanna's gonna play at the Oscars show her Oscar nominated <laughs> song for Wakanda uh, Forever. La Black 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 Panther. So we're gonna see Rihanna. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 we're gonna be like that sitting. <laughs> <laughs> And also coming with, ah! like, <laughs> I won't be able to help myself, like, screaming. I need to. <laughs> we'll all be screaming with you. 
How about you, Nivi? What's your favorite food? Um, my favorite food is sushi. And I would be listening to um what Billy Eilish? No. <laughs> um, maybe call music because I have anxiety then I will be calm and yes. Mm. Mm, that's so lovely. I see a little question like that, and we learn so much about your personalities. Uh, I want you all to know, as mothers and daughters, how incredibly proud we are as Inuit from all around the world that you've made this film, that it is so difficult and so powerful that the Oscars are taking it on as something to be celebrated. and. Each one of us uh, as Inuit are screaming and crying and cheering you on from the, the bottoms of our hearts. Um, and I can't wait for everybody to be able to see this powerful piece and, and where these families are going to go next. Thank you so much for having us, Heather. Oh, this was just the most wonderful conversation. I really hope you get a big hug from Rihanna, <laughs> like, or at least The Rock. <laughs> if I were you, I would be tweeting at everyone. See you next week. Right now. <laughs> and, and this was just uh, so awesome. Thank you, Lakalu, for doing a wonderful job of moderating. And to all of our guests, we're so thrilled for you. And we will be rooting for you and eating our popcorn and dressing up at our a uh, Greenlandic fashion at home in support <laughs> for you next week uh, or not next week in March. We're so next thrilled. Week, next week. Is it next it's week? Next, oh my gosh, it's next week. Next week. Okay. It is next week. It is next <laughs> Sunday. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, it's next week, officially next week. So I can't okay. wait to see them say Ivalu in the as they announce the short films. It's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you all. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. We really appreciate it. And we are rooting for you. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Like feeling the support from fellow Inuit in Canada means so much to us. We've been talking about it. Like Oh. It really gives something, it gives strength, it gives hope, like we're connected and it means so much that you guys asked us to do this because we've been talking a lot about how we need to connect more because Greenland and Canada is not that far away, but they're like sure. the yeah. infrastructure, like there's no direct flights, like we need, we are like hungry for each other we are like seeking each other i know many indigenous young people are like following each other across canada and greenland so this really means a lot because we feel so much more connected to canadian inuit right now we're literally this close go out this window and fly for an hour and... <laughs> maybe we need yeah. to start a tartapolic yeah, home festival for supper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love it mm -hmm. uh thank you so much have a wonderful time uh you're gonna love los angeles if you have time go visit the la brea tar pits they're really cool venice beach <laughs> like, like, get out and see everything go to ripley's believe it or not <laughs> and the hollywood walk of fame it'll be so much you're gonna we'll so be there time. for a week so we will have time hopefully. i'm gonna email you all i lived in la for a year i'm gonna email you all my suggestions for fun things to oh, do thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right i hope um, you get to I'm high five some, some celebrities <laughs> i'm thanking you uh Thank you for you for showing your interest for the girls. That's a big one uh, thing to do. <laughs> We're so happy. Yes. On behalf of the Indigenous Screen Office, the Inuit Art Foundation, and the Inuit Futures Project, we want to say huge congratulations, fingers and toes crossed, and we'll be rooting for you next week.
Thanks everyone. And, and thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Bye.